anyone who wears vintage knows that when someone compliments your outfit, like you, you just can't wait to say, oh, it's vintage. <laughs> I don't know, maybe that's just me. Hello and welcome back to My Tech Wardrobe. My name is Caitlin and today we are talking wedding dresses, specifically vintage wedding dresses. Get ready, because this is some pretty niche content. <laughs> so having just gotten married in October? What month is it now? November? I've lost all track of time in reality. Yes, so about three weeks ago, I got married and I did it wearing a wedding dress. <laughs> and I got a vintage wedding dress and I really enjoyed the process. So I thought I would share it and share some tips and tricks for you along the way if this is something that you are interested in. I wanted to make a video on this specifically because a lot of people who have reached out to me over Instagram once they saw what my dress was were really interested in vintage wedding dresses in general. So whether that was repurposing a vintage wedding dress for some other occasion or finding the perfect vintage wedding dress for their own wedding. People are interested. So I figured I would tell you the story of how I found this dress and where and why I picked it, and then I'll get into the tips and tricks that I think you should consider if you're looking to purchase a vintage wedding dress, or if you're even just generally interested in the topic. I got engaged way, way back in September of 2018. And at the time we were really excited and not in a rush to plan a wedding at all. Little did we know, <laughs> we decided that we wanted to hold our wedding in October of 2020. Moment of silence for my original wedding date. I wasn't one of those people who had a major binder full of types of wedding dresses or silhouettes or styles or fabrics at their disposal. I was pretty much open and willing to whatever dress I found and whichever one came my way. And I wasn't actually seriously looking at all because as I said, in 2018, my wedding was two years away in the future. I'm a procrastinator, so realistically, two years in the future means basically non-existent until three months before. So at the time, I really wasn't looking. So in early 2019, and I think January or February, my mom was actually visiting and we headed over to Auburn Vintage, which is one of our favorite vintage stores, and we just wanted to poke around. We were looking through racks, looking at shoes and other clothes, and Rachel at Auburn used to have this really great gowns section, so it was just essentially formal wear that you can go and pick through and try some things on. So I was looking around and all of a sudden my mom, from the other side of that section, said, hey, why don't you look at this? And it was a wedding dress. <laughs> it was this very, very long A-line sleeveless wedding dress. And when we asked Rachel about it, she said it was from 1960. Originally, it had long bell sleeves and those had since been removed because she thought it would be more likely to sell without the sleeves, which I turned out to be the case, <laughs> but no spoilers. So on a whim, my mom convinced me to try it on. And at the time I had very, very short hair. So probably around here, it was, freshly bobbed and I, it was very well suited to a lot of vintage styles of dresses and clothing in general. But I went into the dressing room, I tried this dress on, it had a half zipper and buttons up the rest of the way and when I walked out I realized it fit like a glove. From the bodice to the waist to the shoulders to the neck, it was a perfect fit. I don't know what my previous past body doppelganger was, but clearly they were wearing this dress because it fit me almost to a T. And my mom loved it, I loved it, Rachel loved it. And it was the first wedding dress I had ever tried on, period, except if you count my mom's from 1990 when I was a kid. This is the first one I ever tried on, so I thought I should probably give myself more time, right? Like surely the first one you try on isn't the be all and end all dress. I should probably give myself time and 
try some more on and I just thought, well, we'll pause for today. So I thought about it and I thought about it and a few weeks went by and I went back in and I saw it and tried it on again and I liked it and I couldn't stop thinking about it. And I just had this moment where I hadn't tried on any other dresses <laughs> and I just thought, you know what? Maybe there isn't this giant fireworks moment. Maybe it's not crying because I'm not really a crier. <laughs> Maybe it's not that tears say yes to the dress moment. Maybe it's just knowing in your gut that the right dress had found you and I couldn't stop thinking about it. So the fact that I couldn't stop thinking about it sort of encouraged my decision and the price was right, by the way. I will get to this in the tips section, but the dress in total with tax ended up being only around $350, which compared to average wedding dress prices is amazing. So I bought the first dress I ever tried on, but my only concern with this dress is that I had bought it essentially a year and a half ahead of time, or what I thought would be a year and a half until my wedding. And I figured, well, I've got a lot of time to alter it. I'm in no rush whatsoever. The year of 2019 basically came and went. We went to a few weddings of some of our friends and I noticed they were all wearing long gowns and I noticed it was kind of cumbersome to walk around in, you know, you're, they're, they're always picking up their dress and having to sort of scoot around. And it just started to get my wheels turning of, maybe I don't want this dress to be long. Fast forward through 2019, we are at the top of 2021, and <laughs> what do you know? The world shuts down. Planning a wedding in 2020 was a literal nightmare. So um, if any of you went through that lovely experience, please do share your experiences if you can in the comments, because I would love to commiserate with you. So after this dress, had sat in my closet for a year, we were still unsure by July of 2020 whether or not we were going to get married in October of 2020. The situation was that unreliable that we just figured it would make way more sense to postpone a year to October 2021 20, so that we didn't have to worry about all of the restrictions because in theory by 2021 maybe they would lift and we would be able to have the the wedding that we want rather than you know a very 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 small wedding so that was great and all but in july of 2020 when i didn't know if we were going to actually get married that year or not i actually had my dress altered <laughs> so i took my dress to a wonderful lady out in the middle of the countryside on a dairy farm what i had done was completely overhaul the bottom of the dress i decided after seeing in 2019 how cumbersome a large dress can be I decided to cut it right off to T length. I'm 5'4 and a petite 5'4 at that, so I really didn't want a massive dress to kind of swallow me up. So I went with the T length and what we were actually able to do, which I'll talk about later, is save some of that trim that came off the bottom of the train. But all we basically did was take off the train, cut it into a T length, and then have a removable crinoline underneath. And that allowed me so much more wiggle room to be able to sort of move around and dance and do what I really wanted to do for the wedding. And then all we ended up doing in addition to that was nipping in the waist very slightly and then patching some of the lace at the bodice. But there really weren't major overhauls outside of that. So July of 2020, the dress is done. <laughs> I don't have to make any further alterations to it. And then we move our wedding to the following year. <sighs> so then the completed dress sat in my closet for an additional year to 2021. <laughs> now I had been trying it on periodically throughout the early part of this year, 2021, because I wanted to make sure it still fit. <laughs> if we had to take it in or take it out, I needed to make sure that it was actually going to look right because I wasn't sure. And to be honest, I wasn't even sure if my style was the same as it was two years prior when I actually purchased the dress. But every time I tried it on, it sort of swooshed around. I felt good. 
and I still felt really comfortable and I felt like you should feel on your wedding day. I was also, the summer of 2021, was able to find a veil in collaboration with Rachel, a vintage veil as well, to go with my dress, which was great. And we actually ended up taking the trim from the bottom of the train that was removed from this dress and putting it on the veil. And I think the effect is really beautiful. I, I mean, I don't like it, but I think it was nice. So after all of that, sitting in the closet for a combined probably two years, having those random alterations done, completely overhauling the dress and trying to figure out what would work and what wouldn't, I got to wear it. And I have to say, it was the most comfortable, most beautiful dress I've ever worn. I got compliments on it basically all day. Now, I mean, I know I was a bride walking around, so I feel like everyone just compliments you that day, but people specifically complimented the dress. And they said, this is a very unique dress. It's probably vintage, right? Because I can't see it anywhere else. And I went, yes, yes it is. Anyone who wears vintage knows that when someone compliments your outfit, like you, you just can't wait to say, oh, it's vintage. <laughs> I don't know, maybe that's just me. But despite all of that stress and all of that absolute nightmare of a planning scenario, the wedding was a perfect day and the dress was a perfect dress. So, I mean, it all just worked out. All right, tips and tricks for finding the perfect vintage wedding dress for you. Now, I have quite a few of these based on my experience and my experience was pretty much universally good despite the uncertainties with the timeline. So I cannot recommend enough finding a vintage or secondhand dress and then making it your own because I felt so unique and so beautiful that day that I know you will too, I hope. My first tip is try if you are in a big metropolitan area, try to go to a smaller city or smaller town to find your dress. So I live in a pretty mid-sized suburban city in Ontario and the vintage store that I worked through was in a small town in the outskirts and so was the tailor who altered my wedding dress. And I find that when you're looking in certain areas, you're going to find a more reasonable price for the vintage dresses and vintage clothing in general. And I say reasonable not to devalue the, the clothing or vintage businesses, but it's just a fact of business that in smaller towns, things are slightly less expensive because the cost of living is slightly lower. So. When you look to these smaller rural communities and areas, try to think about where you can potentially source a wedding dress from. Look up vintage stores and secondhand stores in those areas and even shoot them an email or a DM to ask if they have wedding attire. And chances are they do. Most vintage stores will have some kind of wedding attire, even if that's not their primary inventory. And actually, if you are someone who is looking to get married and is looking for a much more unique wedding dress option, vintage stores will have them. It's not just vintage white wedding dresses. They'll have vintage dresses of every color that you could potentially use for your wedding. So try to go to the outskirts first and try to go to smaller towns first because you might find a different type of inventory there and the fact that they have formal wear might mean that the prices are a little bit lower because a lot of the time people aren't looking for a lot of formal wear in those smaller cities and rural areas. So they wanna make sure that those, you know, dresses move. So something to think about. Like I said, my wedding dress, I think with tax was about $350 and to tailor the entire thing and to have it cut perfectly cost an additional 30, $30. So in all, my dress was $380. That is unheard of for a wedding dress, just saying. Next is to consider the eras that you're already drawn to. If you already really love wearing vintage and vintage fashion, then there's probably already an era that you really are drawn to visually. So for me, that's anywhere between the 50s and 60s. I like other eras as well, but that's sort of my sweet spot. And my dress happened to be right smack in the middle of that, which was 1960s. Go in looking for the type of era you usually are drawn to, but don't stay 
attached to that particular era or any particular silhouette. When I asked Rachel from Auburn what her main tips were in preparation for this video, she also recommended to not be attached to any one particular silhouette because although that silhouette may be perfect for one person, it may not be perfect for your body type or what you're looking for. And if you're really dead set on getting that silhouette, you may not find it in vintage or you may not find it in a way that makes you feel really comfortable and really confident. So go in with an absolutely open mind, but acknowledging what you're already drawn to. At least that gives you a starting point to work from. And on the subject of tailoring, don't be afraid to alter a vintage dress. I know that I watch some thrift flips sometimes and I just think, no, you're ruining this beautiful vintage piece and flipping it into something trendy. But this is your wedding dress. You have to do something that's gonna work for you and you can still maintain the vintage integrity of the garment if you choose the right tailor, which I'll talk about in a minute. But even if you've inherited a vintage dress, for example, and your, maybe your grandmother wore it or your great grandmother or your great aunt, it's still entrusted to your care, which means you can still certainly alter it in the way that it makes sense to you. So it still needs to feel like the original dress, which is why you probably were drawn to it in the first place, but make changes based on what works. We need to be realistic this day and age as people who wear wedding dresses because I knew that a long train was not gonna work for me. I was gonna trip all day I, and perhaps even fall on my face, we don't know. But I avoided that entirely because I cut that right off and made it T-length and made it comfortable for me. I am so glad that I did. So if you need to alter something, either to let it out or to restructure it slightly, do it. Don't feel bad and don't feel like the store owner will judge you either. They may even suggest some ways to alter the dress to make it more your style or more what you're looking for. So consider that dress a starting point. It's like any other dress. If you went to a bridal boutique and you bought something brand new, you can still alter it to make it work. And I think the great thing about vintage dresses is that A, it's already going to be a very unique piece and B, you can make it even more unique and customized to you by altering it just a little bit. And when you're considering alterations, think about who the store recommends. So as someone who works in the vintage market, chances are the store owner has a recommended tailor. So whether that's someone who works on just any custom vintage piece or wedding dresses in general, they can help you realize that vision. And often if you ask the store owner who they personally recommend, they are happy to give you some options because they wanna see those pieces work for you. And they obviously will have someone that they trust more than others to get that work done for them. So always ask, they might have a card. And when you do that altering, consider which pieces you might be able to reuse. So in my case, it was the trim at the bottom of the original dress that I was able to attach onto my veil, but I could have used that for my flower bouquet. I could have used it somewhere else on the dress. So if you know you're getting rid of maybe some volume on the dress and there's some nice trim or lace or sparkle that you wanna keep, make a note of that and work collaboratively with the tailor or seamstress. Do we still call them seamstresses? Seams? Seems people, I'm, I'm really trying to be gender neutral and inclusive, but I really don't know. I gotta, I'll look it up. Anyway, <laughs> work with them to try to save what you can out of the dress and restructure it appropriately. And maybe just see where else you could use it as well. It doesn't have to be on the dress itself. It could be, like I said, on the bouquet or veil, but it also could be maybe a detail that you can use to customize your shoes. Maybe you could use it in certain centerpieces. It's really up to you to reuse and recycle. I also recommend when you're at the store and you're interested in purchasing a wedding dress, ask if they have veils too. They might, you never know. And if they do, see if there's one from a similar era to the dress that you're purchasing, because I think it's always fun when you can 
sort of cosplay as a different era anytime, but specifically for your wedding is pretty fun. And always, always sit in the dress before you buy it. <laughs> Just, and if there's no chair in the fitting room or anywhere in the store, just do a couple of squats because you need to know how your body moves in this thing. Yes, you can alter and you definitely should alter the dress to make it fit perfectly for you, but if it's not even comfortable to sit down in in the first place, maybe it's too tight or something rubs or something's a little bit weird, you need to know that because then if you do still end up buying it, you can go in to the tailor with that information and let them know where to put stuff. So if something is rubbing you under your armpits, maybe have them put some extra padding on the inside of the dress somewhere. You know what I mean? So always, always do a couple squats, do a couple of like <laughs> dance moves. Did you know those were dance moves that I was trying to do? Oh, okay. <laughs> just test it, okay? Just, just make sure you're testing it before you say yes to the dress. The one thing I will caution you on, however, is that once vintage dresses are gone, they're gone. So if you go to a store and decide to leave without that dress, it may not be there the next day. So I was very, very fortunate and I was able to sort of DM the store owner and, and periodically ask if it was still available while I was still deciding um, and they, let me know that it was still there, but it's not always the case. If you're going in thinking that this might be the dress, you might just want to buy it because chances are it's less expensive anyway, even including tailoring. And even if you don't choose to wear that actual dress for your wedding, you might be able to wear it to something like a bridal shower or some other event that you're having throughout the course of your wedding. I don't know what your plans are, but you know, you can wear a wedding dress anytime. Maybe not, but I did. I also purchased actually two wedding dresses. So in 2021, I bought an additional wedding dress from Auburn and I used it for my bridal shower because I loved that it was short, it came with a little bolero jacket that was too small for me, but I still love it. And I felt like a princess of Genovia that day, let me just say but both dresses in combination were still cheaper than a regular dress. So one thing to keep in mind is that a lot of dresses from the 50s will be shorter because there was a trend to have dresses be sort of at T length with a crinoline underneath. So if you're interested in shorter dresses, the 50s might be an era for you. So that's just something in general to keep in mind. Feel free to ask the store owner as well what the story of the dress is. When I go to vintage stores, I always ask if they bought it in a certain collection, if they found it from any particular person who wore it in the past. Rachel at Auburn, for example, only accepts wedding dresses that came from happy marriages for sort of good vibes for the dress. So I think that's a really sort of fun tidbit and story to go along with it. The wedding dress that I wore to my bridal shower was worn by a lady named Dolly who got married a little bit later in life and had a very, very happy marriage and passed away at the ripe old age of 90 something. So I think it's just such a really lovely story that goes into a garment. And sometimes you can find that out because you feel like you're continuing the story of this dress for someone and inheriting something really special that you can then pass on. Well, this was a bit of a long rambly video, but I really just wanted to talk about this dress because I think it's a, a special dress in the history of my life and probably of this channel because it's the only wedding dress I'm probably ever gonna wear. I mean, I hope. <laughs> I just wanted to share it with you and hopefully if you're considering a vintage wedding dress, these tips have hopefully helped you. If you're looking for more wedding-y type content from me, I have my Finding my grandma's wedding dress after a 50 year hiatus. I have a thrift with me for wedding decor and some other things on my channel that I think I'll put into a wedding playlist. So if you're interested in that type of content, feel free to 
to check that out. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, consider subscribing for more videos like this or more videos not like this. And if you didn't like it, subscribe anyway, because it will be different next time. Bye.